Checks in advance, checks in advance. What up, though? We here to make this hard shit easy. Hard shit Apropos, easy. what up? Hardships hard in my heart and I left them bleeding. Hey. Didn't mean to leave when you needed me. I was trying to make this hard shit easy. I know I can make this hard shit easy. If you're trying to make this hard shit easy, man. A lot of us try to make this hard shit easy, but we wind up making it worse. So, if you're in any type of position to make this hard shit easy, let's make it easy. Two bricks strapped in the car seat, speed. Red lining with the red key, fighting demons. He never signed an agreement. Fuck a plea, we on big. We stand tall, living life on the edge, screaming, "Fuck y'all!" Had that bread, I put that price on your head. Run it back if you ain't heard what I said. Dead men don't talk. Subliminal, just a mental thought. If I find out that lives is lost, mind of a boss. I had to learn I wasn't taught. Place the blame, I take the fault. Sacrifice for the sake of love, like dying on the cross. Hardships hard in my heart, and I left them bleed. Didn't mean to leave when you needed me. I was trying to make this hard shit easy. I know I can make this hard shit easy. Tap in, man, if you haven't heard this song, if you want to get this song, it's Detroit King Tape featuring Afropo, and it's called Easy, man. I think this song is a very fitting song for these times, and especially the state that the culture is in right now. Give yourself a round of applause if you're trying to make this hard shit easy for you and your family. You know, give yourself a round of applause if you're risking, you know, taking risks, risking your life, whatever you're doing to make this hard shit easy. You know what I'm saying? It's all about love, uh, spreading love, and getting to the next level for you and your family. I hope you guys are doing it. That's what this song was about, making this hard shit easy. I was going through a time in my life to where... You know, I was straddling the fence and I, I just wanted to make the hard shit easy. That's what I've always been going through in life to whether I was doing a wrong to make it right. You know, if it wasn't, if it was wrong, I was still trying to do it to do something better, to do something right. So I never just like people have a misconception of or a view of people in the streets. When they tell you like, yo, man, you can do this, go work, go do this right here. Um, when the, uh, the deck is stacked against you. And if you go to the hustle code, I got part one in the hustle. I mean, chapter one in the hustle code is environment. And it breaks it down about how you're not a product of your environment. And you're not a product of your environment because it's all about a mindset. Your environment starts at your mindset first. That's why you can have two individuals from the same neighborhood, same area, whatever. And both of them have different outcomes, totally different outcomes. One can become a judge, doctor, lawyer, all of that type of shit. Entrepreneur. Other one can, uh, you know, head, be headed to the graveyard, prison for life, whatever the case may be. Or just wind up being nothing, you know. Uh, not to the standards of being able to, you know, fend for himself and take care of himself and his family or whatever. So now what we want to say is uh, I want to send this message out to all of the the people who are doing any type of legal shit, doing something wrong. Like you have to find a way to make this hard shit easy. And me saying that is you have to have other avenues. Stop depending on getting rich from the streets. When I was coming up, the old heads used to school me and tell me like, yo, young blood, you got to use it as a stepping stone. And some of it sunk in and some of it didn't. But it hit me the hardest is after I stumbled and made mistakes and had to pay for them. With prison, uh, with, you know, threats on my life or almost losing my life. And that's when I took the time and I learned and I said, damn, you know what? I have to figure out something else to do with my life. 
Cause you can't sell, you know what I'm saying, like like drugs all your life. You know? You can't if you're a hitman, you can't, you know what I'm saying, be putting in work all your life. If you choose to do that and you've accepted your fate with your creator, you know, whatever you're you're here doing, if you're doing anything illegal and you accepted your fate, by all means. Like, you know what I mean? I don't advise anyone to do that, but if that's what you've accepted as your fate, then who am I to tell you don't do it? I'm not telling you don't do it. This message is for those who want to change. So if I can reach one person with this show right now, if I can just reach one person, you know, to say, hey, man, you're right. I'm going to take this and focus on this instead of taking this and doing that. You know, because it's a, it's an addiction. Whatever you're doing that's producing fast money and shit like that, that shit is a heavy addiction. We all addicted to the shit. I've been there. I was addicted into getting that fast money. And I still have to check myself now. But now it's more about like having my shit in order. It's more about like, Oh, I can breathe. I ain't got to take care of that. I don't have to take care of this. I don't have to take care of that. Being Having shit taken care of, paid. Listen, paid off or paid up. That's the model. Those are the two things you need to be focusing on. Having shit paid off or paid up. When you have that type of um, freedom, that's freedom. Because now you have an ability to create time for creativeness. You know what I mean? You can make time for creativeness. Let's say that. You can make time for your creativity for you to be creative. But if you're still it's hard straddling the fence. Because it's going to come a time to where you got to pick one or the other. I remember Jay-Z from the Jay-Z's 50s all these guys they said they had to make a decision. And the decision had to be, okay, keep doing living this life or go 1,000% over here. I mean, and you can see the decision that they made. You can see what resulted from that. And I've been at a crossroad, you know what I'm saying, years ago in my life with that. Like, you know what? I'm going to focus on this more. That's when I created Health and Hustle. You know what I mean? That's when I created... That's when I invested in studios. That's when I invested in music. That's when I invested in all this right here. I was like, you know what? It has to be a better way. It has to be something else better to life for me than just constantly risking my life every day. If you're risking your life every day, right? You got to think to risk your life every day. Now, I'm going to compare this to war. Imagine you being off at war. And... You're off at war and you have to fight on the front line every day. You dodging bullets. You know what I mean? The bullets are the, the killers, you know what I'm saying, who trying to take what you got. Okay, let's compare it to the streets, the battlefield and the streets. So you got bullets flying over your head, motherfuckers trying to drop bombs on you, everything, right? So that's one thing. Those are the killers in the streets, the robbers, you know what I'm saying? Then the flip side of that, you got the feds. Everybody's there to take your life. If you're on a battlefield, you got so many um, chances of losing your life or being handicapped, you know what I'm saying? Losing a limb, same shit in the streets. You're at risk. So how do you remove yourself out of that? How do you do that? If you got any paper right now and you've been in the streets for the longest, guess what? It's the time for you to make a decision. You have to come to that fork in the road and you say, okay, either I'm going to continue to do this or I'm going to go full-fledged into this right here. I'm going to make sure everything paid off or paid up and now I'm going to focus on this right here. You have to be able to believe in yourself. I have a chapter in the hustle quote. I'm going to read a quote out of that. You have to be able to believe in yourself. Your self-belief is going to help you when you come to that fork in that road. 
Because you're going to come to a fork in the road. Just recently, like, I was talking to a friend of mine and just sharing indictments from different people we know who getting indicted and shit like that. That shit is scary now. You know what I'm saying? It's scary now because it's like, whoa. You can't even really go run into nobody or meet nobody. Like, shit is scary because it's like, yo, like, what the fuck am I going, you know what I mean? Like, you could be doing good and that could be your past life. You know what I'm saying? And they can rope you up into some shit. This is how this game is played. Just from your soul, you'll be guilty. Guilty by association is a real thing. Don't be thinking like, oh, I got to do some shit like that. Nah, man. I'm paranoid to the point where I know my past, my history. So to bring me in front of a jury or some shit like that, because I'm fighting it regardless. Bring me in front of a fucking jury. And guess what? Like, I can easily be fucking convicted. Like, the justice system has no justice. You know what I'm saying? If it had justice, I wouldn't have did. Out of 10 years I spent in prison, I did six years, and I turned around and did four. My six years, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Whatever y'all had on me, y'all had on me. It wasn't justified to give me six years as a teenager, first offense ever, but whatever. Okay? I'll take that one on the chin. The second offense that they gave me with the state was bullshit. It was a conspiracy charge. It was my brother's case. He went out and did whatever he did. I had no fucking knowledge of it. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't it wasn't me. So now the judge saw, you know what I'm saying, it another way. He didn't want to see that it wasn't me. You know, so it was a kangaroo court. They convict me of that shit. Conspiracy. Gave me two counts. A conspiracy sent this me to um i went on the run for three years all that shit right there but even while i was on the run for three years i fucking believed in myself i invested all my money into music you know what i'm saying i had a fake id i was in and out of state you know what i'm saying doing my thing still everything selling weed like a motherfucker so selling pounds this one trucks was coming in we was getting truck loads of that shit so we was running through that shit i was getting a nice piece of change i had $30,000 pro days, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was making the profits like that. So we was getting to it. And I did that for three years straight. But I was investing in my music, investing in myself. I had billboards over the city, everything. I was paying $10,000 a month for billboards. You know what I'm saying? Around the city. This is how much I believed in me. Regardless of being on the run or whatever. I didn't panic and say, oh man, I'm on the run. I can't do this, can't do that. I was like, fuck that. I'm still going to push, you know what I mean, push because I believe in myself. So now, and there's plenty of times before that I came to the fork in the road and it was like, yo, what you going to do? You going to do this or do that? But it was already too late. I had committed that, uh, to, you know what I'm saying, that, and I was already caught. They found me guilty at the trial. And after being on the run for three years, I got caught in a traffic stop, some fluke shit, and they locked me up. When they called me on a traffic stop, I had 20,000 CDs in my truck. I had a new truck I just had got. That's when the new Rams just had came out, shit like that. So I was loaded down with CDs. So I was trying to explain to the officers, like, yeah, I do music, blah, 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 blah. And I had an Alabama ID. So long story short, um, after getting locked up, they ran my prints and everything. I was trying to rid out so I could hurry up and get up out of there before my prints come back. Couldn't happen. So after they found out who I was, they was like, oh, yeah, motherfucker, you sit here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They finna come get your ass. They finna come uh, extradite your ass. So I'm like, okay, cool. So now I get in that motherfucker. It was so crazy. And it was a moment that hit me hard. Because while I'm sitting in the holding tank, I see a guy that used to wash all my cars, Renzo. I don't know if Renzo's still alive or not. But I saw Renzo. Anybody know him? He used to be on White Hill washing cars like a motherfucker. I think he got... Might have got locked up for a body or some shit like that, whatever the case might be. But anyway, he used to, and he wasn't no old guy. He was a young guy in the hood, but I think he was on drugs, but he used to wash the shit out the car. So I used to be able to come get him any time of the night, anything. He used to beam my whips up and we go out, shit like that. So I'm sitting in the holding cell and who I see in that bitch? I walk in there. 
And Renzo's in the hole and said, he like, tape? Like, man, what the fuck you doing in here, dog? And seeing him in there was so humbling. And it was just like, my response to him was like, dog, the same thing as you, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, the motherfuckers got me for some bullshit. But it's just the fact that he looked at me in reverence, like, what the fuck is you doing in here out of everybody? You you doing so good. Like, what he understood why he was in there, but he like, what am I doing in there? Like, that's how much of a, a standard or status he held me to. And it hit me, and it hit me hard, and I'm just like, I felt dumb. You know what I'm saying? I felt stupid as hell. Like, what the fuck am I doing in here? So... I had to, you know what I'm saying, I had to dance to the music, you know what I mean? I had to face the music, they say. Uh, from being on the run those years, I did a lot, I accomplished a lot in those years, I made a lot of money in those years, and it was time to face the music. So, that was that fork in the road. When I faced that music, and I came home after that, so I wind up giving them four years, I fought for four years. I never gave up, I believed, because I knew, like, yo, listen, man. Y'all railroaded me. This was some bullshit. Conspiracy state charges don't even have conspiracy charges. That was strictly supposed to be a fed charge or some shit like that. They just created something to attach me to a case because they figured I was the brains behind it because of my past record. If I never had a past record, they would have let me go. So, long story short. Um, so, I got out from there. You know what I'm saying? And I start. Right back to my music. Right back to, you know what I mean? Like, after they overturned the case. Now, they had to overturn the case and release me immediately. But I never gave up from fighting. After they denied me, what well, they denied me, two of my appeals. Let me see the initial appeal. Then the uh, Michigan Court of Appeals. The Michigan Supreme Court of Appeals gave me my, gave me my action. And they reversed it. They overturned my motherfucking charge and let me go. They immediately uh, set me out. But the judge was such an asshole that even after they overturned it, the higher court overturned it and ordered him to release me, this motherfucker took his time over a month. It was like, fuck that. He wasn't budging on the decision. He was like, nah. So they had to, my lawyer contacted them and they had to give him an order or they were going to hold him in contempt. If he didn't process the paperwork to release me. So they had it out for me anyway. Because I was just a fighter. Like I was I was fighting bro. Like I'm like nah bro. I ain't laying down like that. I believe in me. I know what I'm put here for. So what I'm telling y'all is this right here. Just sharing that story with y'all. I always like to share a story. That way y'all know who y'all talking to. You know what I'm saying. I'm Detroit King Tape. I've been through it. I lived through it. You know what I'm saying. But. I've come to a point in life where it's so much more to do by motivating and inspiring people with these stories. Not telling you these stories to show you that I'm a G, that I made it through so much shit. Nah, it's to show you that I got a lesson from these stories and now I can share it with you. That way you may not have to bump your head to get the lesson. You can actually just get the lesson. So that's what we supposed to do. That's why you had elders in the village that were able to sit. You could sit down by a fire or sit down and they would tell you stories. That way you can get the message from it. And that way you can further that and pass that message along to the next generation under you. So now when we speaking of belief, we speaking of belief and we're speaking of like you coming to that fork in the road, right? So I want to get to this. Okay, here. So we're going to go to chapter six, self-confidence in the hustle code. Detroit King Tape, tap in and get that hustle code. Okay. So now we're going to talk self-confidence, right? So self-confidence, chapter six. Finish how you start. Can't come in as a lion, but leave as a pussycat. You get that? Okay. Before a hustler can have self-confidence... He must first embrace self-belief as a hustler. If you don't believe in yourself, how can anyone else believe in you or believe in any of your ideas, plans, or whatever you, whatever you propose for advancement? When a hustler has self-belief, it empowers him to make major moves with efficiency and build self-confidence. With confidence, 
you will know who you are, your strengths and weaknesses, your ability to perform and assurance to make the right judgment calls. Okay. Now remember this, finish how you start. Can't come in as a lion, but leave as a pussycat. Okay. That's self-confidence. Now, that's self-belief. Now, my thing is this right here. When you get to that fork in the road, that self-belief is going to help you make the right decision, right? You already know that you've done, you know, you got your master's degree in hustling in the streets, right? Say you've been, nine times out of ten, the people who hustle and the people who tune into this shit, it's people who probably have some experience and who've been in the streets, right? But if you haven't, I'm going to just say. If you know that you've done this before, I don't care if you're a stripper, right? Let's relate this to strippers. If you stripped at all of these clubs and all this shit right here, that shit gets old. And you like, man, I don't want to strip no more. I just talked to somebody the other day and it was like, listen, I believe in myself. And one thing I'm not doing is going back to the club again. You know what I'm saying? They say they're not going to strip no more and i saluted them for that you know why because they understand that life is past that life is in their past so understand when you come to that fork in the road and your life is in the past if you don't see the signs to be able to to peep that you come to the fork in the road and you need to make the right decision not the decision that fits you at the time because you can make any excuse to continue to do a thing but you need to have, like, for sure belief and reassurance to say, you know what? No, I'm going to do the right thing. That's going to lead me over here. Because I've seen so many people, and I spoke on this before, that they get to that point. They making money. They got it good. They got money stacked up. You know what I'm saying? They got everything that they need. But they continue. And they continue. And then guess what? Some people come in, you get that knock on that door, and they sweep the rug off from underneath you. They pull that rug off from underneath you. Now, all those years you fought to make it easy, now it's worse. Because it's later in the game, they taking shit from you, your people, everything. They forcing motherfuckers to tell on you. You know what I'm saying? And then it puts you in a position like, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? Which I hope everybody does the right thing. And if you are like involved in any illegal shit, first of all, take your weight. You know what I mean? Like don't don't turn it on somebody else just because you made a mistake or you got caught or you got fucked up, whatever it is. If you signed all up to play, play by the rules. You know what I'm saying? Don't change the the rules of the game just because you got caught or you you know what I mean? You taking the L. Nah, bro. You got you to gotta take that and lay down with that. Stand up. So don't give your people up, man. Stay strong on that. If, you, if you're if a soldier and you ain't gave your people up, man, round of applause for that first of all. You know, I ain't getting no round of applause, though, but that deserves a round of applause. So when you come to that fork in that road, you got to believe enough in yourself to say, okay, let me let this go. Now, now getting to the juicy part right here. This is what I was talking about on the live today. On the Great Manifestation Mondays. If you tuned in today, if you participate in the fast, round of applause. And now this, let's get to this right here, because this is what I was talking about on the show. Now, when you get to that fork in the road, and say you make that right decision, bam, make that right decision to invest in yourself and make it happen, right? You got a couple of dollars put up. If you have a couple of dollars, cool, I hope so. You know what I'm saying? Then you can pay things off, pay things up, bam. Okay, take a little pressure off you. Okay, now etch, uh, sketch you out a plan. Say, okay, I'm going to take X amount of dollars. I'm going to do this, do this, do this. Psh. Try to see. If you don't know what you're doing, get with some uh, professionals. Get with somebody who does uh, know what they're doing. They maybe can help you with your plan. You know, and if you, especially if you're, uh, you're a musician, you're an artist, anything like that, guess what? You, you're dealing with the music. Tap in with artistdevelopment.com. You know, we have a company over there that's trying to help artists secure, you know, and monetize. And help them come up with a plan, whether it's artist development or whatever. Through my years of experience, I've spent over a million dollars in the music game. Of course, I'm not reaching the success of other artists or said, but I have paid for the game. You know, I'm not. Music is my passion, but I understand that that's not 
you know what I mean, my way in. I got other things going. That's my way in. But music will always be, you know what I mean, a part of me. I love music. It's a part of my story. I learned so much during the years of doing so much music. And I will still continue to drop music. My music will be more impactful. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be a, a polarizing, popular artist. That's not my thing. I don't even care to do shows and dance on stages and all that shit right there. Perform. But I will. You know what I'm saying? If the situation is fitting. And if it aligns with my purpose. I don't want to just go do a show, you know what I'm saying, uh, with people just shaking their ass and shit like that. I'd rather do a show to where people are getting something inspirational from it. I want to set my own tour up to where, you know, I'm pushing a hustle code and I can give them a bit of my bars like easy, like songs like this right here, trying to make this hard shit easy. My music is impactful in that way. I don't just want to talk about the bags. I have songs where I go crazy like that too, but I don't just want to talk about the bags and move. Like I'm moving on. I'm growing. It's growth here. So now went through all that. If you're growing, you're showing growth and your music or whatever passion, talent, gift you're doing, round of applause for yourself. So now artistdevelopment.com. Tap in if y'all need help or assistance. Y'all talk to my guy over there. We got a good staff over there and uh, we definitely can help you out. And this is how you've been seeing me. All I'm doing all this shit because of the rollout from Artists, De uh, artists uh, Deserved. So ArtistsDeserved.com. Okay, now, let's get to this right here. So we talking about self-belief. We talking about the fork in the road. When you make the right decision at that fork in the road, now what you need to do. When you make that decision with that fork in the road, right? Now, remember, this is the past life. And this is your new life that you're trying to live, right? You can't keep dipping into this life with these people and the shit that's going on over here and bringing this over here. Because that means you never left that life. You still live in it. So now what you have to do, and I'm going to tell you why this is so crucial. Find out. What in this lifestyle, people, places, and things that's not serving this purpose over here. You feel me? And cut that off. I don't care who it is. People, places, and things. Take some time to yourself. Cut that off. Remove yourself from that. And by removing yourself from that, I'm going to give you some game. I'll give you the game on why removing yourself from that is so important. It's so important to remove yourself from that. Because that's when your fucking blessings come. When you cut off the shit that's weighing you down, your anchor that's holding you down. And I spoke on this in the live. So if something is holding you down, if it's an anchor and it's holding you to this lifestyle right here, you have to cut that shit. This is how you're going to grow. You got to cut it. You see what I'm saying? You have to cut this lifestyle off. And once you get over to this new lifestyle, Blessings will start to come in abundance. I promise you that. Every time I've lived that life and I've done that, and I say, you know what? Position, I mean, uh, things will be propositioned to me and it sound great. Yo, you can make X amount. You can make you a few couple hundred real quick. You know what I'm saying? And those come to my thoughts, and I'm just like, damn, you know what? Is it really worth it though? When everything is already going good, do I need that extra icing on the cake? Am I ready to risk all of this I'm building over here and investing in? Just to do that little shit. That's crumbs that's just going to pay a couple bills or, you know what I'm saying? Maybe buy a new chain or whips and shit like this dumb shit. Because once you get the money fast, that's not respected. You don't respect that money. It's never been a time. That I made fast money, and I made a lot of fast money. I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I never made fast money and respected it. It's never been one day I made fast money. It's like, oh, I'm going to hold on to this. This is my baby. Never. Every time I made that fast money, guess what? That shit was spinning faster than I made it. If I had a play on the floor for, okay, damn, I, all right, I'll I pull down 100 off of this one right here. I'll pull down 80 off of this one right here. And guess what? Man, before that 80 was made, 160 was spent already. That's how fast I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take that, do that right there. I'm going to drop that over there. You see what I'm saying? Fast money spent fast. I just broke it down about that. 
That was a saying that my mom and them, they always told me that. Fast money, spend, spend fast because you don't respect it. And that's no lie. So now when you get to that point, you have to do that. You have to cut that shit off. You have to make it be known because that's what's going to separate you from this lifestyle. And then you do this. Then you have people like, damn, dog, you don't fuck with us no more. No, it's not that. I really just don't fuck with that lifestyle. I don't have time to get pulled back into that net. It's good over here. I enjoy doing this type of shit, making fucking uh, a podcast, sharing, you know what I'm saying, my thoughts with y'all, living a health and hustle lifestyle, fasting, eating fruit, reading, writing books, you know what I'm saying, being attached to multi-million dollar projects with people who are on the same wavelength I'm on. We're aligning in the same purposes. I don't like looking over my shoulder and you know what I'm saying? Wondering if the Fed's going to reach out today. and Yo, like, I'm tired of that shit. That shit is draining. You know what I'm saying? Got to watch out because, or oh, I'm looking for this motherfucker. Man, put them on that. Like, yo, like, that shit is draining, man. For real. Like, I done done it all. You know what I'm saying? And still capable to do whatever. Like, it's no problem. But at the same time, do I want to? Like, I don't give a fuck about that shit. I want to do something to where... Where I can see my children have children and be able to say, your granddad did that for you. Like, come on, man. Or your father did that for you. I don't have grandkids, but my children. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be able to see them have children. I want to be able to, who don't want to live? Who just fucking proud to crash out? Like, who just, if you know people that's proud to uh, crash out, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're going to use them for whatever reason you're going to use them for. But I'm saying this right here. A motherfucker that's proud to crash out. I think you should be watching yourself around them motherfuckers. Or you should just be really like your time should be limited with them. If you can't sway them or show them another lifestyle. I mean, crashing out is not it because you're a suicide bomber flat out. So when we talk about the battlefield... You're battling all of these things. If you're risking your life every day, that means you're living on the front line every day. And the front line is where niggas get their heads knocked clean off. That's why they send that, send that first battalion out. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever see Saving Private Ryan? Soon as them first ships was coming there, guess what, man? Them boys were sending so many hot slugs through there. Boom, hitting motherfuckers in the head, blowing shit up. That's the front line. I walked the front line plenty of years. I no longer want to be on the front line. Like, yo, like, you got to make it up to status. You got to make it up to ranks, whether it's general, whether it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever your status becomes, you have to make it up the ranks. You know? Or don't even go to war. How about that? Don't go to war. But my thing is this right here, like, Salute the people who have made it through the war or who have went to war because as a man, I believe a man is judged off of his battle scars, off of his scars. Like if you see a lion, right? You can tell if a lion is tough and what he's made of by looking at his bruises, his screw, I mean his his, his scratches on his nose or some shit like that. I don't know pretty ass lion walking through the jungle. You know like where the fuck that lion come from? Nah, it's a domesticated lion. Nah, man, you want to see some type of battle scars. A man has to have that because that shows that he can actually defend and protect his family. You know, or he stands up for something. I don't want no motherfucker rolling with me with no battle scars. You ain't got no battle scars? Like, come on, dog. Where you been at in the salon with your girl? Fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't it. I love, like... uh Mama used to tell me, rest in peace, Mama G. I think Mama G was from uh, Mac and Iroquois or Mac and Seminole, one of them. Um, and she used to always say that people have to be tried, tested, and proven. You know what I'm saying? People have to be tried, tested, and proven. So are the people you're around tried, tested, and proven? Let me tell my man one sec. Yeah, are the people that you're around tried, tested, and proven? 
if they not try testing and proven, then how you know how they gonna respond? You know they gonna respond because they told you they was gonna respond, or they told you, man, no, nah, I never do that. I'm gonna go hard, dog. If I ain't saw you go hard, if I don't know you to go hard in all situations, I I can't give you that. We had a situation, right? So, me and my brother, we had a situation to where <clears throat> it was a person that was like our cousin. And we used to serve him, you know what I'm saying, a lot. And, you know, we was, we wanted his business so bad that we would take everything that we was getting and basically giving it to him. Like, here you go, bro. Because we, we know he turning up numbers. He doing his thing. And so we found ourselves bending over backwards to accommodate him. Until we woke up one day and said, we the plug. Like, why are we bending backwards to accommodate this motherfucker? Helping him make all that money and we only taking this little bit off the top. Like, nah, bro, that ain't, that's not the game. We got to make it make sense to us. And you got to earn that. Like, here's the thing right here. Make a person earn that shit. You got to earn your respect from me. That's what I said in the song. From now on, you got to earn your respect from me. You know what I'm saying? And how you complain when you ain't cashing. That was another thing. It wasn't like he was coming to cash. He would come put half down on some shit and then take the rest. And yeah, man, y'all have to wait. Wait till after he done fucking off of doing his thing and then we'll get our money. You know what I mean? Like, fuck no, nah, dog. It ain't about you being a plug and accommodating a motherfucker. That ain't the game. And you can apply that to anything. That's I'm going to apply that to anything. Like even with my books. Guess what? Pay me my value. This is a valuable book. You see what I'm saying? Like you don't have to negotiate and do all this with a motherfucker. Nah, dog. I know the value of that. So guess what, man? Give me, give me my money for my book. That's all it is. It's real simple. You're going to get more out of it. So just go ahead and cash it out. Motherfuckers got the nerve nowadays that they'll complain to you and they ain't even cashing shit out. You see what I'm saying? But that's because you're you desperate hustling. Desperate hustling, trying to hurry up and shake the bag. You feel me? In whatever area you working in. I'm just speaking on this because I'm experienced in this area. I understand it all too well. You feel me? But my thing is this right here. Everything that I learned from the streets, I'm applying to the legit side of things. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just giving game up to people who may still be in whatever lifestyle they're using to say, hey, you got to think smart to get out of it. Because too much of this shit is going on. It's too many, too many cards in the deck stacked against you. Especially now. Like, it's not the same as we were growing up. Like, when we were growing up, a lot of people had the same agenda, and the people had an agenda to get some money and get the fuck out the way. That's why you had guys back in the day who were hustling the streets, but they had plant jobs. These motherfuckers would be the, the man around town, and guess what? They clocking in and clocking out of the job. And I never looked at that weird or anything like that. I was just like, damn, okay, that's what it is. But once I got spoiled off of running around the streets when I was younger and making that money and how that money come in, I was like, shit, what am I going to work a job for? But I didn't think about 401k. I didn't think about taxes. I didn't think about, hey, if they ever come fucking with you and look your name up or look you up, it'll show that you're working you have something legit going see they were smart you know what i'm saying they were smart back then but we lost all that us coming up it's like fuck that what we working a job for we ain't doing none of that shit we gonna do this and that was it that cut off an era of the smart street hustler and it it it, it bred the hustler of uh not giving a fuck or like the the disregard the motherfucking hustler that didn't abide by the rules. Like, we ain't, like, fuck that. We creating our own systems and everything. So that's when motherfuckers start running off on the plugs. That's when all of that shit right there start happening. You know what I'm saying? Because back in the day, 
it was like cold for them old school guys to like pay their tabs and do that shit right there. They wasn't too much running off. If you heard about a motherfucker that just ran off back in the day, guess what? Somebody was getting killed. Like straight up. Like back in the day, if you heard about motherfuckers was running off, if they ran off with some serious people shit, like nine times out of ten, they was getting killed. They was getting cooked. You know what I mean? It wasn't none of that shit right there. Yeah, especially when you was dealing with, you know what I'm saying, like motherfuckers in different countries and shit like that. They weren't fucking around back then. But, you know, the game has changed. It's been more watered down. Like everybody's fucking working with, you know what I'm saying, the people, all of that shit. Oh, let me see. This is my man calling. Yeah, so anyway, man, great talk. You know, I'm going to get to these calls and get to some. I got business to attend to. Appreciate it, man. Y'all tapping in. We, we making this lifestyle easy. Make the right decision. Make the right choice. Let's go. I got to go. I'm free, but I'm still stuck in the grind. Give yourself a round of applause if you made it through the show. Do something healthy. Eat something healthy. Keep a healthy circle. Let's go. Mob shit straight off the muscle is health and hustle.